For the production of craft paper, long fiber softwoods are often used to create higher strength paper. For the production of crude tall oil as a byproduct of craft pulping, pines are especially good, yielding a much larger ratio of the oil than other trees. In the craft pulping process, the long wood is first debarked in a rotating drum by friction generated by beating the logs against each other and against the drum wall. The removed bark falls through slits in the wall of the drum onto a conveyor belt which carries it away for storage prior to burning it in a bark boiler to generate electricity. The debark logs are transported to the chipper for cutting. Since uniform chip size is important for achieving consistent pulp quality, the chips undergo thickness screening before storage. High quality pulp is produced from a carefully blended mixture of forest thinning and sawmill chips. The primary task of the pulping process is to separate the fibers by using cooking chemicals. Here is a continuous sulfate process beginning with the chips from the wood yard entering the system at the chip bin. Chips then enter the low pressure steaming vessel where they are preheated with steam to remove air trapped inside the chips. The chips are then pressurized by the high pressure feeder and impregnated with white liquor in the impregnation tower. The white liquor penetrates into the capillary structure of the chips. The impregnated chips are then cooked in a highly pressurized vessel called the digester, where the high alkalinity and temperature converts the esters and carboxylic acid in rosin into soluble sodium soaps of lignin, rosin, and fatty acids. The pulp used for making paper is then washed with washing liquor in multiple stages and used for making paper. The spent cooking liquor is recovered and turned back into white liquor through many further refining steps and chemical reactions, leaving other byproducts along the way. The first step in recycling the black liquor into more usable white liquor involves concentrating the weak black liquor in an evaporator. At this stage, raw rosin soaps float to the surface of the mixture, a byproduct of the refining process. The soaps are first separated from the black liquor using skimmers. The rotational skimmer shown moves in a circle at the surface of the liquid, pushing the soap layer towards the soap standpipe. Baffles in the tank prevent the soap from short-circuiting to the liquor standpipe by ensuring the liquid moves through a significant distance, thus allowing enough time for the soap to surface. More black liquor can be separated from the soap by centrifuging the mixture or letting it settle. The alkaline rosin soap then goes through acidulation, where heat and sulfuric acid are added to the soap causing the brine and crude tall oil to separate into two phases. The crude tall oil is then separated from the brine by decanting. At this point, the crude tall oil still contains many impurities such as water, metals, and solids, which are removed in a pre-stage treatment. Now that the crude tall oil has been pre-treated, hydro treatment, recycled gas purification, and fractionation can occur. Catalytic hydro treatment occurs in a fixed state reactor. The process applies catalysts, heat, and pressure to modify the tall oil structure. The structure of the tall crude oil is modified to remove sulfur, nitrogen, and oxygen to obtain a molecular structure usable for the fuels. At the same time, the molecules are cracked and isomerized to obtain the final hydrocarbon products. This reduces the chain length of the hydrocarbons, transforming wax into liquid hydrocarbons. The amount and purity of hydrogen used in the hydro treatment process must be highly controlled as its efficiency is dependent on having an excess of pure hydrogen in the main reactor. This is obtained by recycling the hydrogen that hasn't been used in the process. The unused hydrogen is purified and fed in back into the main reactor. The mixture of hydrocarbons is fractionated by separating heavier and lighter components. The liquid is preheated under pressure to just below its boiling point and then fed into a distillation tower. As the feed enters the lower pressure tower, it begins to boil. 
The lighter components boil to the top of the tower where they're rooted to a condenser that cools and condenses the vapors back into liquid. This is called the top product. The heavier liquid component in the tower flows to the bottom of the tank where it's drawn off as the bottom product. The main products distilled from this mixture are biodiesel and bioethanol. UPM is a Finnish pulp, paper, and timber company which has helped to develop this technology. They are currently building a plant which will utilize the tall oil produced from their own pulp mills to make biodiesel. The plant will be completed in 2014 and will produce about 100,000 metric tons of renewable biodiesel annually. This is a sustainable method to produce a biofuel that will reduce greenhouse gas emissions by up to 80% compared to fossil fuels. Thank you very much. We hope you enjoyed this video.